Hi. Time to take a look at some of the alternate scenes that we didn't see from this video. The place that we're in right now is, if you remember, the demon statue was there, and the other locked door is there. Now first, we got our hands branded, then we got the key and went, went through that door, then we went through the demon statue door. So what happens if we try to do this out of order? I have not, ha I have not gotten my hands branded, but uh, let's try to go through the demon door. Anything happen then? If we haven't done what we're supposed to? No. Camber isn't here. His demon skeletons aren't here. But we can't open this door. Locked. 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 Because I don't have the Shrive. So, there would have been no point in coming here first. Alright, what about... the other locked door? It's because I got my hands branded that I was able to pick up the Shrive. What happens if I don't get them branded? And I go through this hallway. Alright, we already saw that. There's no difference there. But there might be a difference if we continue to walk down the hallway. We're threatened with some wrath if we continue on with our unbranded hands, but Adam Randall does not fear any wrath. <laughs> Maybe he fears, fears that wrath. So yeah, this is why there are so many skeletons in this hallway. S so many people tried to go down this hallway to get the Shrive. And uh, apparently none of them had their hands branded so they couldn't get it. Which would also explain why Camber did not want to come down this hallway himself to get the Shrive. He wanted it bad, and the Shrive was just in this room right down the hall. But I guess he could not get it himself. This place has waited longer than you can possibly imagine. You are marked for your destiny. Take the people of your We cannot make a Take it. You must. Alright, so last time we took the artifact. What happens if we ignore the voice? Do not turn from this place, but the artifact you behold, the answer to your father's face lies with its minute. You must not falter. You and the artifact together, together as one, a weapon against all evil. Alright, so if we are undecisive, the angel does give us a second chance. What if we just decide to just reject this responsibility altogether and leave? Do not turn from this place, for the artifact you behold. The answer to your father's fate lies with it. That and the salvation of this mortal realm. Yep, I mean, they really don't want us to leave, but I guess they're gonna give us the option. What if we come back? I assume that if we come back, they're gonna let us try again. Yeah, we could leave again, I guess. No? Yeah, we just, we're just gonna take off. So yeah, we can, if we want, just reject the responsibility, but it's not like anything happens in the game if we do that. So I'm not sure why they give us the option at all. Maybe it's just a player agency kind of thing. You have to make the conscious decision to take up the quest. Even though if you don't, nothing else will happen in this game. Pretty sure Camber will not appear if you have not taken it. Yeah, he's not here. So the only option to, would be to go back and take it. You have with you 
the one thing that I and the world need most. We are not concerned with you, only with the shrine. Give it to me. Give it to me now. Now, speaking of Camber, here he is. Now, usually when you have multiple conversation options, you'll end up seeing all of the video clips. Usually the top one that you can pick will just go right to the chase and go to the last clip that will proceed uh, and give you progress in the, uh, in the scene. If you want more detail, you can click on the ones that are beneath it. So... I think that there is one clip here, however, that we actually didn't see. Let's try No Way Priest on this one. Blow it up your ass. Then don't imagine you will leave here alive. Give me one good reason. How about... Yeah, now it just goes straight to the last scene of the conversation. But we did not see that one where we tell Camber to just blow it out his ass. We're not interested in what he has to offer us. Not that he was offering us anything. He just wanted to take the Shrive. Didn't even think to try to trade Adam something for it. I mean, what kind of villain is this? Next time, boy. It is you that shall come to me. On your knees. Doesn't even occur to Camber that maybe Adam would trade his father's safety for the Shrive. That, you know, that's that's how you would have to think if you're a villain who wants the object that can save or damn the world. Okay, we're back here at the beginning of Chapter 3. So we've seen the alternate scenes. But there is something that we have to go over now. Now that uh, Rebecca is with us, she's now our, our traveling companion. Uh, we can talk to her about the items that we have and the observations that we have, and she can give us some information about it. So that basically means we're going to look at everything in our inventory all over again and see what Rebecca has to say about it. For example, let's look at Adam Randall. Now, we know about Adam's brands. Does, uh, maybe Rebecca has something to add about those brands? Look at my hands. The marks look like burns. But they don't hurt. I can't understand. Adam, there is a power connected to the brands and that odd device you found in the mausoleum. The Shrive. Right, the brands allow us to hold the Shrive, but we still don't know why we're the branded one. I don't think Rebecca will respond to reflections, because I think that's Adam just thinking to himself. These marks on my hands. Yeah, she didn't have anything to say about that. Uh, you might notice that there are additional entries in Adam's observations. We already looked at the father, but does Rebecca have anything that she wants to add? When my father appeared to me, he was wearing a stone around his neck. A pendant? He said it was his jailer. I know little of that, Adam, save that it binds and keeps him here. The essence of the stone is all around. It seems to come from everywhere, every corner and shadow. And she doesn't know much about the stone other than it is very powerful. My father... All right, something new is Alf. Here he is. We just met him, and he seems to be a friend. And there's a bunch of topics we can talk to Rebecca about Alf. I guess we'll do them in order. Do you know anything about the holy relics Alf spoke of? Being a knight of the ancient world, Alf would be tied to his equipment, the bond stronger than word. And we are supposed to be looking for his equipment, which it... Those pieces are somewhere in the house. What about his order, the Falshire Knights? What do you know of the Falshire Knights? I once read of a battle fought between a company of rogue Templars and a group of knights, which I believe were of the Falshire order. But I'm not sure where the battle was fought. Maybe we'll find out a bit more about that later. Alf told us to go with open eye. What's that about? What do you think Alf meant when he said, to go with open eye? Isn't it obvious? Look at my pendant. It's kind of a strange thing to say now, to look at her pendant, because we actually can't. It does not appear in our inventory. It will eventually, 
we'll be able to take a look at it, and her pendant does look like an eye. Uh, but if you were looking for it now, it wouldn't be there. So it's kind of an odd thing to throw in now. Let's talk about the Wings of Angels. Wings of Angels? Mean anything to you, Rebecca? Wherever there is evil, there is always the light. Perhaps it's nothing, but I think his words speak of a location or an item connected to angels. Well, maybe we'll find out something more about that later. Sword of the Dragon? The Sword of the Dragon, held aloft as a beacon? There are many stories connected to dragons. St. Michael battling Lucifer during the fall from heaven comes to mind. Nothing concrete, though, as Alf really was speaking in riddles. He also mentioned the voyage to the tower. Alf mentioned a voyage to the tower. I can't be sure, but I don't recall the house having any towers. No, it doesn't really seem like it. Any reflection that uh, Adam has about Alf? Alf seems to want to help. Can I trust him? I need to trust someone, for sanity's sake. Go with open eye. The wings of angels. Sword of the dragon. Voyage to the tower? What does it all mean? Yeah, if Alf was trying to help, he didn't really give us all that much information we can use. At least not right now. And uh, we can think about Rebecca. She's right here, so we could just ask her about her background. Hope you don't mind me asking, but where do you come from? Here and there. I'm always on the move, being a lecturer. So she's in the world of academia, apparently. And her family? Rebecca, do you have any family? I did. A long time ago. Oh. I hardly remember them. What about you, Adam? Do you have any other family? So we have options here. Uh, let's first go with Don't Answer. If you don't mind, I really don't want to talk about this right now. Some other time, perhaps. Let's do it again. Rebecca. I did. Yep, no family. Let's, this time we feel like answering. Only my mother. My parents separated when I was very young. What happened? Well, maybe we don't feel like talking about that right now. If you don't mind, I really don't want to talk about this right now. Some other time, perhaps. Uh, but maybe we feel like talking about it now. Rebecca. I did. Oh. Hardly. Let's answer. Only my What happened? Uh, yeah, let's tell her. You know, people grow apart sometimes. Dad always had more time for the church than his family. Mother moved back home to Canada. I never saw Dad much after that. I met him briefly four years ago when I was on a student exchange. It was an awkward meeting. He changed a lot, but it was too late for both of us. It's never too late, Adam. Sounds like the voice of experience. So, as we already knew, Adam and his father didn't have the closest relationship. I'm not sure why they give you choices during that conversation, because you're probably just going to play it multiple times until you hear all the lines. So I'm not really sure why they do that. Let's talk about Rebecca's powers. She demonstrated, apparently, some mind-reading abilities when she shook Adam's hand. That was a nice demonstration of the paranormal. Do you only read minds? Can you make objects move, project thoughts? Ben Spoons? <laughs> there are many aspects to the paranormal, Adam. Many things one should know. Um, that sensitives, faculty X, intuition, the noosphere. What do you want to know? And we can ask about all those things. I guess we're going to do them in order. Can Rebecca tell us about psychokinesis? Psychokinesis, PK, is the direct influence of a mind on a physical system without the mediation of any known physical energy. Okay, and how about dimensions? We see three-dimensional space around us in the physical world. Well, many regard the psychic world as four-dimensional, the fourth being a place where an individual may move from one place to another. And lucid dreams? In lucid dreams, the dreamer is aware of dreaming and can decide whether to continue the dream or end it. So the dreamer essentially manipulates the dream. What about sensitives? Sensitives are those who are sensitive to impressions that are not normally perceived by the average person. Such a person is commonly known as a psychic. And faculty X? 
Faculty X is the mental power used to loosen the hold which our present surroundings have on our attention. The power can also be used to become aware of other places, other times and other realities. What about intuition? Intuition is a sudden knowing, independent of any logical thought process, and often, even at first sight, contrary to logic. Are you telling me I'm psychic? I like that little joke. I did have to think about it for a second. And lastly, what about the noosphere? The noosphere, or mind sphere, is the term for the network of thought which some people believe surrounds the Earth and links all humanity. Hmm, a field around the planet linking everyone's minds. Sort of like some kind of morphogenetic field, I guess you could call it. But that seems to be everything we can talk about, Rebecca. Yeah. Lastly, we can look at the sarcophagus. It's right here in the same room as us. What about it? The sarcophagus? Think there's anything inside? I'm not sure if I want to find out. If the lid was designed to be opened like a door, there'd be telltale marks on the stone. Hinges or something. There's something there all the same. Powers. And they seem to be connected with stasis, movement, and great distance. A sort of runic association. Movement and great distance. Maybe if we are able to open it up, perhaps we'll get an idea of what that's all about. Now, I don't think... That we're done just because we looked at the observations because Rebecca has things to say about everything in our inventory, or just about. What about the shards that Elias Camber gave Adam at the beginning of this? They're still there. What do you make of these fragments? They seem to possess an inner power. You're not wrong. There's tremendous magic contained in these at one point. Even though the residual magic is faint, the signature is blinding. So even though they're broken, apparently they were extremely powerful, whatever they are. These fragments have some kind of occult markings, runes or something. They are occult symbols, seals designed to capture the essence or quality of a spiritual power, a magic symbol that possesses a power of its own. Oh, and we could talk more about that. Where else are seals used? What would be their function? Most people think they're used only in rituals to summon demons. Those people are narrow-minded. Dangerous, not only to themselves. Mm, Rebecca seems to have disdain for people who think that. What about fallen angels? Fallen angels? Sounds dubious. As a child, I remember Dad telling me the story of Lucifer being cast out of heaven. Theologically speaking, I always felt Lucifer was misunderstood. Adam? Rebecca apparently does not feel that way. These fragments... Yeah. Just making sure that Rebecca wouldn't have anything to say about the reflection. I don't think Rebecca is going to have anything to say about the lamp. It's just the lamp, as well as the matchbox. What about the keys? There's that. And there's this. Iron key. No markings. No, nah, she had something to say. No markings on that key. But it came in very useful all the same. Nothing to talk about this sword. What about the handgun? Colt 45. Semi-automatic handgun. Know your guns, don't you? Mm, yeah, Adam does seem to know quite a bit about them. What about the shotgun? Shotgun. Winchester. M1897 slide action 12 gauge shotgun. To be exact. Do be careful where you point that, Adam. Yeah, don't just point it around randomly to make a point. That's irresponsible. Dragon. This is scorched quite badly. Quite recently, too. Can we talk more about this? Know anything about heraldry? Is there more to the symbolism than a family crest or coat of arms? Yes, heraldry was initially conceived when knights needed to distinguish themselves from one another in battle. Well, we did find this shield. Not sure if it belongs to Alf, uh, but it is burned and it does appear to be a knight's shield. We haven't needed to use it because, I mean, we haven't really needed to defend ourselves. So it's just kind of been hanging out, but let's remember that we have it here. Cartridges. Or a shotgun. Nothing to say about that. There's a label on this. Colt trademark. Now all you need is a gun. Fortunately, that has not been a problem. There are faint markings down this. Almost tribal. You would have thought Rebecca would have had something to say about the magic staff, but apparently not. 
What about this potion? It's got some sort of liquid in it. Any ideas? Yes, it's magical. Healing, I believe. All right, so Rebecca has now told us it is a healing potion. We could have just used it at any time, but, you know, that's irresponsible. Not using, just drinking a strange liquid without knowing what it does. How about the masks that we picked up in the study? Japanese. I know a little about Kabuki theater. Nothing about the tradition of masks. What was it you said about masks? Well, masks were originally worn to create a different personality. In, in some cultures, it's believed that the wearing of masks for any purpose should be considered carefully, in case the wearer should turn into the personification of the actual mask. Yeah, let's not get carried away wearing these masks, I guess. Wooden voodoo mask. God, these things give me nightmares. I believe Adam does have the same description for all of the masks. I don't think that changes. Theatrical mask. Made from porcelain. Yeah, they would just say the same thing about, you know, don't, you don't be careful about wearing the masks. Do not become the persona of the mask. Now, what about this orange potion? It's got some sort of liquid in it. Any ideas? Yes, it's magical. Healing, I believe. It is another magical healing potion. The orange potion is more powerful than the green. And the shrive? This seems very important. Curious. That is and oddly, she doesn't say anything about it, because so far, this seems to be the main item. This seems to be the MacGuffin. Alf was talking about it. Camber certainly wanted it. And it was guarded by a death hallway that we had to get our hands branded by a magic chair in order to cross. So I don't know why Rebecca is staying, si staying silent about it. How about this statue? Statuette. Covered in gold leaf. It looks really heavy, but there's no weight there at all, is there? What do you make of this statuette? Gold leaf. Not heavy. Looks like one of a set. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, the rest of them are right over there. We could put it right there, but then we have an empty slot. So, we still need to find one more. Alright, we already looked at these potions. Uh, let's see, does she say anything about these parchments? Novel. Look homeward angel. So far, no. Typed. There's something sticking out of the pages. Looks like a newspaper cutting. Oh, yep, there we go. She ha She mentioned it looks like a newspaper cutting, which it certainly is, about those crop circles baffling experts. What about the crumpled letter that we found on the floor? There's something written on this. Looks old and faded. That should. It is from 1930. Actually, it's in pretty good condition considering that. The symbol on this is the same as the marks on my hands. Nothing about that. No address or postage. Hmm. Sent it to. Very nice. Nothing about that. Nothing about the map. All right. So, I think... Yes, that is actually everything. Oh, no. Wait, hold on. I didn't... That is here. All right, so I was completely wrong. The pendant does... I th okay, the pendant doesn't actually appear in your inventory. It appears in the observations. Was that there before? I didn't think I saw that. Maybe it only appeared after she said, look at her pendant. Maybe it showed up then. Because it's here now. That's what her pendant looks like. Rebecca's pendant feels strangely close. I mean... She's standing right here. I assume she's still wearing it. And you're looking at it saying, that's strange how Rebecca feels like she's right here. I mean, I'm guessing she's just confused by that statement, so that's why she's not responding. So, that should be it for this uh, supplementary video for Realms of the Haunting Part 3. Uh, we saw some alternate scenes. That's the first time in the game that that can happen. Uh, as well as we met Rebecca and got her take on the items in our inventory. And uh, yeah, she's going to be traveling along with us. And uh, she's going to be talking about the stuff that we find. And we're going to talk about what might be going on here. What is this danger that we're in? What happened to Adam's father? And what is Alf talking about when he's talking about this quest of such importance? We'll find out in future parts. I'll see you then.